In this GAP video, we'll be discussing standard radio calls. To demonstrate this, the CAA team meet at Paraparaumu, an uncontrolled aerodrome with an Aerodrome Flight Information Service, or APHIS, and fly to Palmerston North, a controlled aerodrome, before returning to Paraparaumu via Fox Pine, also an uncontrolled aerodrome. This flight plan is designed to illustrate the correct radio calls in these airspaces. To help us with this, we meet South Canterbury Aero Club's Aaron Pierce and Kohatu Brooking from Massey University. Before you set off on a cross-country flight, pre-flight planning will help to improve situational awareness and radio calls. This must include becoming familiar with arrival and departure procedures, aerodrome plates, and discussing weather and NOTAMs. It's also a good idea to review the applicable Good Aviation Practice booklets for your route. Paraparaumu sits inside a mandatory broadcast zone, or MBZ, and includes an APHIS. As our flight starts in Paraparaumu, let's hear from Liz, Airways Senior Flight Information Officer. She's going to explain what an APHIS is. So an Aerodrome Flight Information Service, otherwise known as an APHIS, is an air traffic service that operates within the vicinity of an aerodrome. The friendly voices on the radio will provide pilots with weather and known traffic information, essentially painting the picture of what's going on in the area on the frequency. Here, Liz explains the difference between APHIS and ATC. APHIS is unable to issue clearances or instructions or provide separation between aircraft. So how aircraft decide to integrate uh, between traffic, either airborne or on the ground, is the decision of the pilot using a good lookout and the information provided uh, by APHIS and other users. So the expectations of pilots uh, when interacting with an APHIS service it doesn't relieve pilots of their responsibility. They need to maintain a vigilant lookout so that they can see and avoid other traffic. An APHIS should be used as a tool uh, to help update and maintain that traffic picture while they're on frequency with us. A great tip is if you hear other aircraft call up and hear the weather and traffic that's provided to them and they're undertaking the same activity as you, you can say that you copy the conditions and traffic and then read back the Q&H and, and, and runway as it's uh, still a requirement uh, while you're operating with an air traffic service. With pre-flight planning and radio setup complete, it's time for our first radio call. Flight service, Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Paraparaumu Flight Service. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Cessna 172, Club Apron, taxiing, vacating north, 3 POB. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Seal 34, Wind 330 degrees 15 knots, QNH 1012, traffic, uh, Cessna 152, last reported operating between Otaki Strip and Otaki Beach, 2000 feet or below. One two, copy the traffic and Echo Romeo Whiskey entering to backtrack on three four via Charlie. Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey is rolling three four vacating Palmerston North. The aircraft is exiting the MBZ, but there's no requirement to make another radio call. This is because the time between our last radio call and our aircraft departing the MBZ is less than the regular specified interval at Paraparaumu of one zero minutes. Paradua traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskey is 172, two north of Pekka Pekka Ponds, 1000 feet north for living. Pilots operating from secondary airfields on shared frequencies begin their radio calls with the aerodrome they are operating from, for example, Otaki traffic. Throughout the flight, you may hear other radio calls. Pause. 
listen, assess the threat, and make a radio call only if needed. Terra traffic, Charlie Lima Victors, four south of Otaki Beach, 1,500 feet to Paraparaumu. Radio calls are made as appropriate to either avoid conflict or inform or enhance each other's situational awareness. It's important to listen closely to any radio call to understand if it's relevant to you. Don't report at every river mouth or visual reporting point along your journey. This can unnecessarily congest the radio. We encourage you to make position reports only as appropriate. Manawa 2 traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskey, 3 West Levin, 1500 North Tokumaru. Notice how effective prior preparation of radios is for our cross-country flight. So during our planning I actually wrote down the frequencies for us and when we started up I put them into our radios. So all four frequencies that we're going to use both for Power Per Amp, for the Manitou, CFZ, the ATIS for Palmerston North and the Tower for Palmerston North are already sitting in our radio in a logical order where I can flick between them. What is it, what's something that you do um, to boost other people's situational awareness? If there's no visual reporting point around No visual reporting points. Ideally, I like to report off the aerodrome itself. So if I'm close to an aerodrome, I'll report a compass direction and distance from an aerodrome. Yeah, yeah. Because everyone knows where the aerodromes are. People don't necessarily know where O2 is. Yeah. So at least they know where the aerodrome is. That makes it easier. It's saying that a sizable town, most people are going to know where it is. Yeah, exactly. Ideally, we want to use the VRP. My default would be to use an aerodrome, then it would be for the VRP, and then it would be a sizable location to report off that would be quite familiar to most people. Let's hear about any frequency change from Steve Taylor, the Chief Controller at Palmerston North Tower. It's a really uh, good idea for pilots to, when they change frequency to enter some new airspace, that they just take a moment to pause and listen out on that frequency before they burst into, into a radio call. That'll give them time to sort of harness some situational awareness about what's happening on that frequency before they're straight in there, because they could actually be interrupting another transmission by air traffic control or another pilot. While Aaron records the ATIS, Kohatu prepares for the arrival into Palmerston North. Palmerston North. Information Kilo. Palmerston Tower, Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Palmerston Tower. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Cessna 172, 3 North Tokumaru, 1500, request City 25 arrival, 3 POB, Kilo 1009. Echo Romeo Whiskey, make a City 25 arrival. Echo Romeo Whiskey. When a VFR aircraft is cleared by ATC for a published VFR arrival or departure procedure that's identical to what the pilot requested, there's no requirement for the pilot to read back that clearance in full. The aircraft must transmit its call sign as an acknowledgement. So even though we're in controlled airspace, I'm still doing that. I've got one airborne off the runway. Yep, I see that. And we've got another one here as well. We should have one perhaps at about left base. It was continuing approach. Our pilots make their standard downwind call. Echo Romeo Whiskey, downwind, seal 25. If this was the conclusion to a circuit session, the downwind call would include full stop. Echo Romeo Whiskey, continue approach, seal 25, number 2, follow the Diamond Star, 2 mile final. Traffic inside. Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey, seal 25, clear to land. Seal 25, clear to land, Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey, taxi to parking via Delta and Hotel. Taxi to parking, Delta and Hotel, Echo Romeo Whiskey. With the first leg complete, our aircraft taxis in, and we hear again from Steve. Like any industry, communication is really, really important, and, and that's particularly the case within aviation. It's essential that the message that air traffic control want to get to pilots is received in the way it's intended. 
Uh, one of the things we do to ensure that happens is we have a list of readback requirements. Uh, these are items that must be read back by a pilot to air traffic to control to confirm that they've understood the message and in this case the clearances and instructions that have been issued to them. So the items that are required to be read back by pilots are all found in the en route section of the AIP. Uh, there's a list of about 12 items in there and it's really important for pilots to, to learn and become really familiar with that list so that when they're flying around in the cockpit they know exactly what parts of the clearances and instructions they need to read back. And that'll help them whether they're flying VFR, IFR, within New Zealand or, or even overseas. The question often arises as to what the difference is between clearances and instructions and how that relates to, to readbacks. Uh, what you'll find is with most clearances there are uh, elements of readback requirements within there. However, with a lot of instructions you, could, you, you find you don't necessarily need to read some of those back. And an example would be that you're cleared to enter the control zone to the city, report passing the university. And in that example, your clearance is to the city, which would need to be read back, but the instruction to report passing the university doesn't need to be read back. You can simply use the phrase, will co. And will co means, I have understood the instruction and will comply with it. Before a flight, it's important to familiarise yourself with the layout of aerodromes you intend to visit and make sure you understand the meaning of any aeronautical signs. With planning complete for the Palmerston North to Fox Pine Leg, we can obtain our clearance and get on our way. Palmerston Tower, Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Palmerston Tower. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Cessna 172, GA Parking, Departure South, 3POB, Hotel 1011. Echo Romeo Whiskey, make a long burn departure, taxi to the main apron via hotel. Long burn departure, main apron via hotel. Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey, ready. Echo Romeo Whiskey, taxi to Point Bravo 1. Bravo 1, Echo Romeo Whiskey. The controller now gives a conditional clearance which requires readback and correct compliance. Echo Romeo Whiskey, behind the Diamond Star on short final, line up CL25 behind. Behind the Diamond Star, line up 25, Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey, CL25, clear for takeoff. CL25, cleared for takeoff, Echo Romeo Whiskey. We're making a long burn departure. A part of that procedure is turning left after the departure, 1100 track into long burn. Change to Manawa True traffic on 1226, yep. which we've already got set. Nice. So we can actually start monitoring that frequency now as well. Yeah, I agree. We actually leave the airspace. As you see, we're just coming over Longburn now. We're clear of the zone, and as per the published departure procedure, we report. Echo Romeo Whiskey, clear. Echo Romeo Whiskey. Now, an interesting statement about this one is whenever it's you go to uh, Airspace like this, we've got to make sure we follow the full published procedure. So you'll notice that it takes us through to Rangiotu, right. which is a couple of miles southwest of our position here. So we'll just follow this main road down here. And because we're clear, we can swap over on to Manawatu traffic. Manawatu traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskey, Rangiotu, 1,300, climbing 1,500, joining Fox Pond. Manawatu traffic, Echo Delta. When communication is not clear, use either the phrase say again or say again all after. If communications overlap, usually indicated by indecipherable noise, a simple two at once call prompts calls to be repeated, hopefully not together this time. So we know that there's traffic down south here, right? We know that there's traffic that is operating somewhere between Shannon and Foxton. Now, we can't identify that traffic, but we know that it's there. If worse comes to worse, we can always revert back to plain English, eh? We're really? trying to, to establish some sort of separation between us and them. Right, we're on the right frequency. We're talking on COM2, 122.6. 
The frequencies of the Fox Pine Aerodrome and the Manawatu CFZ are both 122.6. Fox Pine traffic will hear Echo Romeo Whiskey CFZ call, and that means a call to Fox Pine traffic at 10 miles isn't needed, and that helps reduce radio clutter. Fox Pine traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskey, uh, three miles northeast of the field, 1,500 joining overhead. Having identified the runway in use, Aaron and Kohatu complete their overhead join to join downwind at Fox Pine. Fox Pine traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskey, downwind 27. Our pilots land in Fox Pine, pay their landing fees, and after a short break, get underway for the next sector of their flight. Notice Aaron and Kohatu give way to the departing helicopter traffic. This is good airmanship. Fox Pine traffic, India Mike Zulu, Cabri, Aero Club, lining up 27. Fox Pine traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskey, holding short 27 to depart number 2 to the helicopter. Fox Pine traffic, India Mike Zulu, lifting 27, vacating south. Fox Pine traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskey, backtracking 27. Fox Pine traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskey, rolling at 27, vacating overhead south for more power per hour. Manawatu traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskies, downwind Fox Pine runway 27, climbing through 1,500, crossing overhead south. Aaron and Kohatu decide to update Q&H and SAR time with Christchurch information. Christchurch information, Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Christchurch information. Echo Romeo Whiskey, 4 South, Manawatu River Mouth, 2000, request update SAR time. 0630. Echo Romeo Whiskey, SAR time now 0630. Manama to QNH 1010. 1010, Echo Romeo Whiskey. With Otaki Beach visible ahead, Aaron and Kohatu prepare for their arrival into Parapara Umu, making a departure call vacating the Manawatu CFZ on 122 decimal 6. They make one call on 118 decimal 3 to cover both entry into the Tararua CFZ and entry into the Parapara Umu MBZ. Fair flight service, Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Parapara Umu flight service. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Otaki Beach, 1000, estimating power per hour time 203 POB. Echo Romeo Whiskey, seal 34, wind 330 degrees, 20 knots, QNH 1010, no reported traffic. Joining downwind 341010, Echo Romeo Whiskey. Echo Romeo Whiskey, Pekka Pekka Ponds, 1000, joining downwind 34. Having assessed the local and circuit traffic, Echo Romeo Whiskey joins downwind. Echo Romeo Whiskey's down 134. Echo Romeo Whiskey. If you're unsure of what's going on around you or you need help spotting an aircraft uh, that's uh, joining nearby, then just ask in plain language uh, to the flight service uh, specialist as to where they are or some clarification on what that traffic is doing to help you integrate safely. Let's hear a final word from Aaron and Kohatu about the four C's of effective communication. Why do we want to know the four C's? The four C's are really helpful to our international students that maybe have English as a second language. That's a good point. And also in noisy conditions like open cockpits. Or our inexperienced or itinerant pilots in an area they're not familiar with. And also poor reception, flying around the hills, you're not having that line of sight. Or maybe the equipment's just got poor reception. Oh, that's a good point. Our four C's are clear, concise, consistent and correct. The first C being clear, it means that we need to talk at a pace that is about normal conversational pace, if not slightly slower. Think about our foreign students, they're already translating what we're saying on the radio. Yes, that's right. And the second C is concise. We want to make sure that our radio calls are short, but they cover the relevant information required for each radio report. So what about a consistent? With consistent, I like to think of three things. The format of your radio call, 
How are other pilots going to know exactly what you're going to say? Secondly, pace. Have a consistent pace when you talk on the radio. And finally, phraseology. If you're using the correct terminology and phraseology, other pilots are able to consistently understand and know what you're saying. Beautiful, and that brings us on to our last one, which is correct. So correct has two parts to it really, that we're using the correct phraseology, as you've just said, but also that the information that we're delivering is correct, that I'm where I say I am and I'm at the altitude that I say I am. When you're required to make a position report, there's actually many tools that you can use. All that is important is that the information is correct and the format is consistent. Awesome, there's plenty of formatting tools that we can use to help ourselves. There's the four W's and sometimes we use PTA, ETA. There's plenty of those examples in the Plane Talking Gap Book. Many of your radio calls will be to improve the situational awareness of other pilots. Think about your radio calls and the principles we've talked about here. And as always, keep a good lookout. In this video, the aircraft had two radios, but if your aircraft has one radio, be aware of the threat of missing important radio calls while changing over radio frequencies. And now for some extra tips from Steve Taylor, the Chief Controller from Palmerston North. This content was just too good not to share. Practice your radio calls. And I mean practice them on the ground before you get airborne. And you can do that with your peers, with your course mates, and with your instructors. And do some role playing and practice to the point that when you're actually in the air making the call, you won't feel as nervous and you're more likely to, to do a correct transmission and feel more comfortable on the radios. And, and to be honest, that's what air traffickers do when they're training. The most fundamental golden rule when uh, pilots are using the radio is if you do not understand the clearance or instruction you've been given from air traffic control, it's absolutely essential that you, you speak out. And that might mean you just speak out in plain language and say, I don't understand, what is it that you require me to do? It's uh, the responsibility of air traffic control, and in this case aerodrome controllers, to sequence aircraft onto final. And for that to happen, we'll often issue instructions to an aircraft to create that sequence. And it might be to extend downwind to report sighting traffic on final so that you can be sequenced behind. Um, what part of that instruction will be to ask the pilot to report sighting that traffic. A readback in that case would be Wilco. As soon as the pilot's seen the traffic, they say traffic in sight and will allow the aircraft to continue their approach, number two or number three, to follow the aircraft. What's really important is if the pilot then loses sight of the aircraft they're supposed to be following, they've got to speak up, they've got to tell air traffic control so that the aerodrome controller can update the traffic information or provide an instruction that ensures that sequencing is happening. Uh, from an air traffic control perspective, one of the things we notice around readbacks is there are sort of three areas that can go wrong with readbacks. Uh, one is that pilots fail to read back an item, and obviously we, we need to chase that up. Air traffic control have a responsibility to chase any readbacks that are missing. Uh, a missing readback can affect flight safety, um, but it also generates extra radio calls because we're having to chase it up which can, can congest a frequency too which is undesirable. Uh, one of the other issues we have is that they read back the information incorrectly and that can definitely impact flight safety. If you can imagine a Q&H being read back incorrectly or an altitude or a level or a heading or a zone entry point. So it's very important for air traffic control to listen to the readback and determine whether it's correct or not. And if it's not, we need to correct it. Um, one of the other issues we find is that when pilots are unsure of what they need to read back, sometimes they default to just reading back everything, which is very well intended, but it can actually congest that frequency, like I was saying. So um, it's so important to learn the list of recall requirements so that when you get a, a clearance or an instruction you can almost filter out the bits that don't require a readback and just come to air traffic with the stuff that does require a readback and that way we can keep all the transmissions clear, succinct and concise.